growth. Uh, and we're going to, yeah, and in a sense, they did from 1960 from 1961 to 2009. We've got. Uh, population growth being outstripped by uh, the, the, the growth in food supply. Um, but that's not really the whole story. Uh, and, you know, the, the, you know the, we've, we've got the sort of myth of a man, uh, this, this man, Norman Borlaug, who um, uh, won the, the Nobel Peace Prize, an aspirant for the Nobel Peace Prize in this audience, uh, who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1970 for his work, Ending World Hunger. Um, but the it's important to remember why the Green Revolution, which is this cluster of things. I mean, you, you often, we often think the Green Revolution was about seed, but it wasn't. It was about improved seed, it was about fertilizer, irrigation, birth control. Um, you know, in, in India, the Green Revolution was about forced sterilization. Um, and it was about uh, you know, marketing boards and government subsidies, really boring things like you know, infrastructure development. Um, but it was called the Green Revolution because everyone was worried about what would happen if these two streams crossed. If the two streams crossed, there would be all hell breaking loose, because then there wouldn't be enough food. The population would exceed the food supply, and people would, you know, there would be this Malthusian disaster. You know Malthus, right? Thomas Malthus, the, the guy who's, who predicts disaster. I mean, not many people get a, a disaster named after them. Uh, Malthus is, is such a guy, because you know, his, his disaster is uh, observing that populations grow Exponentially, so um, people have kids, and then those kids shag, and then they, they have kids. Uh, I mean, they, they grow up, and then they shag, and then they have kids, and, they, and, then they, and, and all the while people are eating and shagging and eating and shagging. But sadly, the, the food supply doesn't go, it doesn't increase quite as fast. Uh, and so, what happens when the streams cross? Well, what, what happens is that um, you um, you, know, in, in, uh, you you have some sort of social disaster where you have the poor rising up, and in particular, you, as a result of the Green Revolution. Uh, you have a certain kind of political change. So, you know, the, the question is, well, why was it called the Green Revolution? Was it because it made people rich? Yeah. Uh, because it, it made an environmental improvement? Yeah. Because it resulted in more green fields? Maybe. Uh, emphasized hemp production? <laughs> yeah. um, I'm not running out. Uh, it wasn't red or white. Um, and of course, the answer is that it wasn't red or white. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, because. Uh, you know, the, the idea of the Green Revolution is that it was the opposite of a violent red revolution like that of the Soviets and the Green or the White Revolution of the Shah of Iran. Uh, it was called the Green Revolution because it was designed to have just enough food for people not to go communist and not to have the kind of insurrection that they saw in Iran. So this idea of feeding more people and feeding the world was always a political idea. And it was about statecraft and about the, the advance and security of capitalism rather than um, you know, the the, uh, the, the, the sort of happy outcome of making sure everyone gets fed. And then you know, often I get pushbacks like, right, that's that. It, it, I don't care what it was called. I don't care why people did it. Did it, in fact, result in more food? And of course, the answer is, well, yeah, sort of. I mean, you know, if, if you look in 1965, of course, the beginning of the Green Revolution, you, 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 know, you see almost a doubling of, and, then, uh, and, and more than doubling of uh, the wheat production uh, over five and then 10 years. Um, but what the magic here and the idea of feeding the world doesn't, you, you don't get that from this graph. Uh, because if you look at how, many, how much people actually get to eat, uh, the numbers are all over the place. Uh, this is the same time period. Uh, but the daily per, per capita, uh, mm. per, you know, per capita per day, food supply and protein supply are all over the shop. Because having more food doesn't necessarily mean you get to eat it. There's so many layers between having, you know, growing more food and making sure people get to eat it. And that's the second part of, of what it is that I'm here to sort of talk about, uh, which is, all right, look, if we're not going to just fix the world food supply problem by just making more food, what do we do? What do we need to do? How is it that we make sure, and how do we tackle all this stuff, for example, about sexism? How, how do we, un, how do we you know, rip patriarchy out of the food system? Which is, no, I mean, it's, it's an urgent question, particularly today. So what do we do? Well, um, uh, I, I don't have the answers, but here's, here's some people who do. <laughs> who, they